Indeed, praise ye the Lord of hosts, for he cometh. Alleluia. Tonight we're looking at two passages of scripture. We're looking at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, and also at Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Just a few brief thoughts on who our Lord Jesus Christ is. Who is this Jesus? Just a few moments ago, we read John chapter 1 and verses 1 through 14, where our Lord Jesus Christ is presented as the Word of God. The first thing that we learn about him was that at the very beginning, he was already there. In the beginning was the Word. And we discover that he is a distinct person of the Godhead, for it says, and the Word was with God, but so that you would not think that he was less than God, it says, and the Word was God. The one whom John presents at the very beginning of his opening verses in John chapter 1 parallels what we discover in Genesis chapter 1. Jesus Christ is presented here as the Creator God. And yet we find when we get to verse 14... And the Word, that is the one who was in the beginning, he was with God and he was God, the one who was the Creator, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life is the light of men. And on the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. And God's the one who brought life into the world. It was Jesus Christ who is the Creator. It says, and the Word, verse 14, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word, that is Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead, became flesh and he actually lived among us. The word that is translated dwelt is a very interesting word. It's the Greek word skene, which means to pitch a tent or to pitch the tabernacle. And so we are instantly brought back to that picture in the Old Testament of the tabernacle in the wilderness where the children of Israel were surrounding the tabernacle and the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud rested on top of it over the Holy of Holies the Ark of the Covenant, where the blood was sprinkled once a year between the two cherubim to make atonement for the sins of the people. Once a year on Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur they say in the United States, but Yom Kippur is the Hebrew. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest alone would go in and sprinkle blood on the mercy seat to make atonement for the sins of all the people. And the glory of God rested on that tent. It was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And it showed that God was dwelling in the midst of his people. He had pitched his tent in the midst of his people. That is the way John describes Jesus, this one who has become incarnate, that's how he describes Jesus in verse 14. The Word was made flesh. That's the incarnation. God becomes a man and dwelt among us. That is, he pitched his tabernacle among us. That's the picture of the Old Testament tabernacle with the glory of God resting on it. And to make no mistake, John says, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is this Jesus? He is the creator of heaven and earth, the sea, the dry land, and all that in them is. He is the one who made you and who made me. He's the one who led Israel through the wilderness with a Shekinah glory cloud. He's the one who dwelt in the midst of his people and so that he might redeem us from our sins, so that there would be no more animal sacrifices, he, who John also describes in this same chapter, John chapter 1, verse 29, is the Lamb of God. 
John the Baptist sees Jesus coming. Says the next day John seeth Jesus coming and saith, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Who is this Jesus? He is the Creator. He is the Almighty Everlasting God. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. He's the one who's portrayed in the Old Testament tabernacle by every article and artifice in the tabernacle itself. But most importantly, he was portrayed by the lambs that were slain on a daily basis to remind Israel that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then there came a day when during the Passover, at the very hour that the high priest was offering the lamb of the sacrifice of the Passover in the temple, the true lamb of God was hanging on a cross and his blood was pouring out. And then he cried at the end of his agony and the six previous words on the cross. He cried out, It is finished! And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the earth shook and rattled. And the whole earth was torn in two. And the graves were opened. And bodies of the saints came out of the graves. And the centurion who stood by, looking at it with terror in his eyes, cried out, Truly, this man is the Son of God. Who is this Jesus? Who is that babe lying there in that manger? He is God himself who loved you so much that he took on him humanity, sinless humanity, for all of us have sinned. We have all been born in sin, but Jesus was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary without sin. No man was involved. And there he developed and grew until on that marvelous Christmas night so long ago. He was born, and the angels announced his birth to the shepherds, those who watched over the sheep that were used in the temple sacrifices. These were no ordinary shepherds. The shepherds of Bethlehem, and we have great historical records to this effect, the shepherds of Bethlehem were the shepherds who raised the flocks of sheep that were sacrificed in the temple. And should not they be the first ones to come and see the true Lamb of God? The one who fulfilled the typology of those sacrificial lambs which would be offered in temple sacrifice. But now came the Lamb of God, the final sacrifice, the one who would take away the sin of the world. The narrative of Christmas is important to the Christian faith because it is here that God penetrates history. It is here in Bethlehem that God fulfills prophecies of hundreds of years before. Isaiah prophesied 850 years before our Lord came. Micah prophesied exactly where he would be born. The Old Testament gave great and precious promises concerning what he would be like. And he fulfilled every one of them. Over 300 prophecies concerning Christ were fulfilled literally precisely, exactly, to every detail in one person and one person only. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Who is this Jesus? He is God. He is sovereign. We read that in the book of Revelation just a moment ago. 
He will come back to judge. But he has opened the door of grace and given an opportunity. If you do not know Christ as your Savior, he is giving you an opportunity to trust him and receive his gift of eternal life. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. You cannot work for it. If you heap together all of your riches, emptied every bank account, sold your house and car and everything you own, and brought it all to God, it would not count for your salvation. Because sin is infinitely heinous in the sight of a holy God. Only a sinless substitute could pay for your sin. And God looked down and he saw the world and we were all dead in trespasses and sins. But God, who is our creator, he loved us and he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Examine your own heart tonight. Do you know for sure that if you stepped across the boundary between life and death tonight, and you might do it? One of our dear church members died this past week, Betty Morgan. She was 98 years old. She'd lived a long life. She'd been in this church from its very beginnings. We sang Christmas carols to her last Sunday. A group here from the church went to our various shut-ins, and we went to Betty. And we sang her the joyous carols that we've been singing tonight out of the hymn book. And four days later, she stepped into the presence of the angelic choirs and the Lord Jesus Christ. You might leave here tonight and be involved in a car accident and might step either into heaven or into hell. Do you know for sure that if you died tonight that you would be in the presence of Jesus your Savior? For the Christian, the Bible promises, absent from the body, present with the Lord. If you don't know it for sure, you can know it for sure because Christ came into the world to save sinners. That is, he came to save each one of us. I'm a sinner. Christ came to save me. You're a sinner. Christ came to save you. But there is one point, a point of transaction that must take place or else it is meaningless. That is, you must believe. You must trust in Jesus Christ alone, not in Christ plus works, Christ plus money, Christ plus something else. You must trust in Christ alone. And you have the promise of God. He will give you the gift of eternal life. That's why Christmas is about giving. That's why Christmas is about gifts. Because it is a very faint reflection of the greatest gift of all, the gift that God gave us of His Son. But you must receive a gift to make it your own. Have you trusted Jesus Christ? Have you received God's gift? If you have, you have eternal life. Gracious Heavenly Father, how we thank you for the great and precious privilege of knowing Jesus, the Christ of Christmas, the one who came into the world to save sinners, the one who died for sinners, 
and who was buried showing he was really dead, but who through his glorious resurrection from the dead and then 40 days being observed by eyewitnesses who saw him, who touched him, who spoke with him, who walked with him, who ate with him. Then he ascended to heaven and someday he's coming again. We've read your word. We've seen the prophecies. We've seen their fulfillment. And with joy, we rejoice that Jesus is our Savior. Father, I pray that you will take these words that have been spoken tonight from your word and sung by this choir and sung by this congregation and use them in our hearts to motivate us to serve Christ. And if there is even one person here or listening over the internet who does not yet know Christ as his or her Savior, that tonight they might make that decision and trust Jesus alone for the gift of eternal life. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.